what we need to recognize is that uh, the central bank um, is injecting rubles into the domestic economy by buying gold at a, at a fixed price of 5,000 uh, rubles per gram. Um, and the objective of that is to make sure that finance is still available for gold mines. And particularly, I think there are three new gold mines being developed in Russia. So those projects, uh, you know, the collateral, if you like, that the banks are providing for those pro projects, um, uh, you know, in the form of gold has to be available. So um, that is the primary purpose of it, so far as we can see. And that's come out from the statement from the Russian Central Bank. It is only available to domestic banks. So this is not an international situation. Um, when uh, this was announced, uh, the 5,000 um, uh, ruble price was at a discount of roughly 20% to the current market price of gold. That has now changed because the ruble has rallied substantially and also the gold price fell a bit. Today, the premium is around about 5%. If the ruble rallies further, then you're going to find that the price of gold in rubles falls to that 5,000 level. The interesting thing is that the statement from the Russian Central Bank was very, very simple and straightforward. It was literally just as I've described it. There was nothing further on. Now, it seems to me that it opens up the possibility that if, let us say, um, a Russian bank can buy uh, uh, gold outside uh, Russia for less than 5,000 rubles a gram, then it is going to be attracted to the idea of uh, an arbitrage. Now, obviously, it can't walk into London and say, um, you know, right, we want to take, you know, buy gold and we'll go on to Comex and <laughs> take delivery because um, these are unfriendly nations. But it can go to gold centers uh, such as Dubai, for example, and bid up for gold. So what we could find is that in a very tight situation, uh, which is really how I would describe the, the gold market. The physical gold market at the moment is extremely tight. There's very little stock around, as it were. Uh, you could find that uh, the gold price gets bid up. The bullion banks uh, find that they're short. And worse than that, the uh, central banks basically have leased or swapped a lot of gold for uh, paper contracts to provide liquidity into the market. I mean, this is a sort of normal function that the Bank of England oversees, arranging leases and so on and so forth. Now, from these actions, I think the central banks who I'd call neutral um, and not involved on either side of the, um, uh, you know, sort of Russian and West um, sanction story, uh, we're probably sitting there and thinking, well, hold on a minute. Um, we don't actually have possession of our gold. Now, possession is, you know, sort of lack of possession comes in two, for two forms. One is that it's leased out to someone else. So someone else has actually got it. Or alternatively, um, it's actually sitting in, in a vault in the Bank of England or um, the Federal um, Bank of New York. In which case, what do you do? You probably think we want to get this back. Now, it could well lead to, you know, requests for repatriation of gold, but let's not quite get that dramatic yet. But I think more likely what you will see is a reluctance to provide that liquidity into the bullion markets, which the bullion markets have become accustomed to. So we're going to see the availability of leasing and swaps, I think, going down significantly. And that could have an effect on the short positions because the bullion banks are all short uh, of the paper market. Um, it could have quite a significant effect on that and could drive the price of gold higher. Now, what's the Russian interest in this? Well, the Russians, um, I think as far as the um, uh, Central Bank of Russia is concerned, uh, she would rather replace um, useless dollars and euros in her reserves with physical gold, which can't be touched by anyone. So, you know, there's no counterparty risk. Um, those currencies at the moment are completely valueless as far as she's concerned. Now, she can't get rid of those currencies because they're embargoed, but um, she can add to a gold reserve. So I think she would not stand in the way of a Russian bank, say, um, venturing outside Russia to acquire gold on that arbitrage basis. Now, the thing that's likely to trigger it is a further rise in the ruble rate. Um, the ruble fell so that the cross rate with the dollar was at one stage about 150. 
Currently it is 83 or 84, so you can see that it has recovered very sharply. Before the uh, Ukraine situation started, it was happily trading around about 70 to 75 rubles to the dollar. If we get back down there, then uh, you're going to see um, the arbitrage opportunity opening up if the price of gold hangs around this current level. So I think that's the way it is likely to play out. I can see, first of all, we must bear in mind that what has been set up is purely for domestic financing operations um, within Russia. It is not available to foreign uh, um, to foreigners at all. But it seems to me that it leaves open the possibility of arbitrage whereby Russian banks go into gold centers in neutral territories such as Dubai. I think Dubai is a, is a classic. Acquire gold there and then sell it on to, to uh, the Russian central bank at 5,000 rubles um, a gram. So that, I think, is where we are with it. It could create a, a significant problem for the West insofar as it act exacerbates the shortage of physical gold at a time when the signal's been given to other central banks to stop leasing and swapping gold for paper in the markets to provide liquidity. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.